Welcome to Heart Forum 2021. My name is Chad Ramahan, and I'm an interventional cardiologist and the director of the Cardiocatheterization Lab and Structural Heart Program here at El Camino Hospital. I'm going to be talking to you about innovations in interventional cardiology and concentrating predominantly on structural cardiology. What is structural cardiology? It's the intersection between interventional cardiology and cardiac surgery. And we're dealing mostly with valves, muscles, holes. We're not talking about coronary artery disease or stents, bypass surgery, that kind of heart, heart attacks. And we're not talking about electrophysiology, arrhythmias, pacemakers, ablations. Um, we're going to particularly be talking about transcatheter devices. They're minimally invasive and they have minimal morbidity. That means there's not a lot of recovery to them. There's no open heart surgery, no cutting of the sternum, and no stopping the heart and putting your brain on a heart-lung bypass. We're going to talk about aortic valve replacement, uh, transcatheter valve replacement called TAVR, transcatheter mitral valve replacement called mitral clip, left atrial appendage closure. We'll go into those in detail, but we do lots of other things in, as well, including transcatheter tricuspid valve repair, transcatheter mitral valve replacement, we close holes around surgical valves that have been placed. That's called paravalvular leak closure. And we close congenital holes like atrial septal defects, holes between the upper chambers of the heart, VSDs, holes between the lower chambers of the heart, and other types of holes. Let's first talk about transcatheter aortic valve replacement called TAVR. Um, this is going through your leg predominantly, 90% of the time. We do a puncture wound in your leg, and we take a catheter, a small plastic tube, and bring it up into your heart, and we push out your old valve and place a stent that has sewn in the same pig or cow tissue that's in a surgical valve, and it's working immediately. We don't have to stop the heart, we don't cut open the chest, and we don't uh, put your brain on a pump, and that allows much better recovery. There are two devices that are approved and we use both of them, the Medtronic Evolute Pro and the Edward Sapien S3 valve. One is made of a nickel titanium alloy with porcine or pig leaflets, and one is made of cobalt chromium with bovine or cow tissue. We've been participating in um, uh, the clinical trials and have been the early uh, adopters of this technology. Our first clinical trial participant was actually in 2010. Um, and we were the second site in the Bay Area to do this. Uh, we participated in all of the major clinical trials in both high risk, low risk, and the um, intermediate risk trials. We've just published the most recent trial, which looked at all comers, 72 year olds on average, that could either have surgery or aortic valve replacement, and people did well. From when we first started doing this in 2010 to now, there's been a lot of innovation. So if you think about surgical aortic valve replacement, that's general anesthesia, a sternotomy, cutting open the sternum, stopping your heart, you're in the hospital for five to seven days and recovery is two months. When we first started doing transcatheter aortic valve replacement, we put people to sleep under general anesthesia. They're in the hospital for five days. They had a temporary pacemaker. They had a catheter in their bladder. They were in the ICU. It was in clinical studies. Now, 2021, we do this with sedation, so people are not under general anesthesia. They're breathing on their own. We do it without surgery. It's just a puncture wound in the groin. That's called percutaneous access. We don't go to the ICU. We go straight to the regular floor, and people are on average in the hospital only one day. And the clinical trials have shown that it's just as effective as surgery, so it's approved for pretty much everybody uh, who has aortic stenosis. Transcatheter mitral valve repair is a wonderful story because it has a local bend to it. The mitral clip, which is what's been approved, was actually invented here at El Camino Hospital by Fred St. Gore. And we were the, uh, one of the early sites in, in America and in, in Northern California. We did our first patient in 2009. We participated in all the major clinical trials, the Everest 2 Realism and COAB trials. Uh, this device has been so uh, well received that it actually got a New York Times article after the COAPT published was COAP study was published in 2018, saying huge advancement for the treatment of severe heart failure. A clip used to repair damaged heart valves sharply reduces deaths among patients with a grim prognosis. So this is a procedure where we go through the femoral vein and we go into the left atrium and we clip the two leaflets together so that they're not leaking as. Uh, uh, and patients improve dramatically. They have less, less backing up into the lungs, less shortness of breath, less hospitalizations, and actually a mortality advantage. Our patients don't go to the ICU, they go straight to the floor, and our average hospital, uh, our median length of stay is one day. 
But MitraClip has actually changed a lot since 2011. There's been advancements in the device. So now there's two sizes of lengths, so longer clip arms to allow for uh, more pathology to clip um, and having a better outcome. And there's actually wider clips. So we have short, narrow, short, wide, long, narrow, long, wide. And we use on average uh, one and a half clips. So half the time we use two clips and half the time we use one clip and are getting uh, great results. The mitral clips now approve for patients who are at high risk for surgical mitral valve repair or replacement, or in patients who have congestive heart failure, who have, uh, have used all their medical therapy and are still having symptoms. And then left atrial appendage transcatheter occlusion is a device called the Watchman device. And this reduces the risk of stroke in patients with atrial fibrillation to avoid anticoagulation. Now, atrial fibrillation is a very common arrhythmia. I sort of think of it as like arthritis. As people get older, their heart gets older and they get atrial fibrillation. Uh, it's about 20% in people over 80 and 10% in people over 70. And it's the, the biggest problem with it is the risk of stroke. You have a vestigial um, part of your heart called the left atrial appendage that has to do with your fetal development of your heart. And it serves no real clinical purpose. And unfortunately, blood pools there. And whenever blood doesn't move, clots can form. And a clot forming there can break off and go to your brain and cause a stroke. And 90% of strokes are due to clot in the left atrial appendage. So most people are given a blood thinning medication such as Warfarin or Eliquis, Xeralto, Perdax. I'm sure you've seen ads on TV for all these medications and they work great. But some people can't take those medicines because they're, they're, they have bleeding complications. And so instead of taking a blood thinner and thinning your blood all over your body just to affect this one appendage, the idea is to close off the appendage to lower risk of stroke. Um, and the top right hand of the, sc of the screen, you can see a left atrial appendage closure device, the watchman in the appendage. And in the bottom right is a transesophageal echocardiographic image. And you can see a little round ball in there. That's a clot, which we would hopefully not have embolized up to your brain and cause a stroke. We've been a leader in uh, Watchman device uh, since it was FDA approved three years ago and are the highest volume in the Bay Area uh, with excellent outcomes. We're about to enroll in a clinical trial called the CHAMPION trial, which is gonna randomize people who are not at high risk for bleeding um, to uh, an oral anticoagulant such as Eliquis versus the Watchman, which I think is a, a pivotal trial to see how this does and help people get off of blood thinning medications. Here's the design of the Champion Trial. We're the, uh, only, there are only two sites in the Bay Area, um, and this should be really exciting. The Watchman device has also had some innovations. The newest device is called the Watchman Flex, which you can see is a little shorter of a device and has um, uh, uh, a little softer end to it, so there's less risk of procedural damage and procedural complications. The biggest real innovation in transcatheter uh, therapies or structural cardiology is not actually a device or a procedure um, or engineering. It's a bit how we take care of patients and how we see patients. And that really has to do with what's called the multidisciplinary heart valve team. So historically, when someone had a heart valve problem or a structural heart problem, they would see a surgeon, they would see a cardiologist, they would see an interventional cardiologist, they may see a heart failure doctor, it was multiple visits, those physicians wouldn't talk to each other and they'd give, them, they'd give the patient multiple different opinions about what to do. The new paradigm, which is the biggest innovation, is where we put the patient in the center and we all talk together about the patient. And in our program, that's called the multidisciplinary heart valve clinic, where a patient will get an echocardiogram and a CT scan, will see an interventional cardiologist like myself and my partners who are cardiac surgeons in the same room with their family. We talk about all their options medical therapy, cardiac surgery, transcatheter therapies, and we try to tailor what's best for them with their needs and values in mind. And that's really the best innovation that we've had in the last 10 years. Thank you.